Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's such a beautiful day today, so I decided to film the intro outside. So, I'm going to be helping you guys, hopefully helping you guys, figure out some quick and easy DIY gifts or um, decoration things that you can do for this Thanksgiving season. Um, it's going to be quick and simple for each idea. I've got about like five or six planned. Who knows what I'll end up doing, but they're basically just going to be using materials that you'd have at your house already or materials that you can easily grab from the dollar store. So it's going to be quick, simple, easy, but looks super cute and professional. So let's get right into it with whatever craft I'm going to do first. I haven't decided yet, but let's just do it. It's going to be so fun. No, 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 don't drink that. That's paint water. <laughs> Someone's thirsty. All right, guys. So for my next, for my first idea, I've got a pumpkin. <laughs> All righty. As you can see from my trusty little dog helping me out, I've got my baby here. But I'm going to be painting a pumpkin. I just thought, you know, what more says fall than a pumpkin? Like, really? So, yes, it looks interesting. And he's about to walk up high across the camera again. <laughs> so he likes to get on tables so it's, I'm on this picnic table and he likes to walk on tables a lot so I just thought like a little fun saying on there could be fun to paint just for decoration in your home so yeah let's get into it so I just got some new paint brushes they were super cheap they're only three dollars and I have like a whole bag of paint brushes but these were really cool looking, so I grabbed some more because, I, I don't know, I can't help myself. It's art surprise. So I think I'm going to go with some fall colors. Um, this yellow ochre or okra or whatever it is. It's kind of hard. I have, like, these colored lights above me, so I can't really see what these colors are that I'm putting on my palette, so that's fun. I'm just going to stick with these four colors right now just because I don't want it to be carried away. It's supposed to, when I see Thanksgiving, I just can't help but think simple and togetherness, so... That's what I'm going for right now. I haven't actually decided what I'm going to do for this yet, so give me a minute. I'm thinking I'll be right back. Alrighty, I came up with an idea. I'm going to start out with this super tiny brush. Super tiny. And I don't know. You guys can see this, right? Okay, great. So I'm going to go in with just a Happy Thanksgiving. It's definitely a difficult surface to paint on um, because it's just not what I'm used to. Alrighty, so I've got it all Thanksgiving right now. Let's use our water for the first time. It doesn't have much of a color change because it's a tiny brush. But now we're going to move on to the part I'm actually most excited about because writing th Happy Thanksgiving, I mean, you could write a text, right? But I'm excited about drawing some leaves or painting some leaves and other details. So I'm going to take this bigger brush right here. It's not that big, but it's a bigger brush. And I'm going to take this more neutral color that I have right here and then draw like a little um, vine or paint a vine, I'm sorry, <laughs> um, and then some leaves. And then I put the white here, but I don't know if I'll need it. Wee. Ooh, it's kind of cute. Okay, so I'm done with those. As you can see, the hardest part, obviously, when painting with neutral colors to the pumpkin is the fact that it's not going to show up very well, but I'm going to paint leaves on it anyway, so it's going to be cool, but yeah, I think it's also going to show up better in different lighting. But I don't usually paint outside just because I don't want the paints to dry, but it just seemed like fun this time, so I just did super tiny dollops of paint, and this is actually really fun to paint outside. I really never thought about it, but yeah, it's so peaceful. Okay, so I'm going to do boisterous leaves on here. See how big those are? I think that's going to be more fun. They don't have to be realistic because um, that's definitely not the theme I'm going for here. Um, I just think it's going to be more fun to have really big leaves. Alright, so I'm done with all the leaves on here. For the record, I did try to make them fun, festive, less perfect put together. So I think I'm going to leave it good like that. Let me take you inside to show you what this looks like in regular lighting. 
here's the finished product so yeah like i mentioned i wanted it to be almost like your five-year-old grandchild painted this for you i wanted it to be fun festive and just kind of careless you look at it you don't have to think about it it's just cute i left it all streaky for a reason i wanted it to be streaky and fun just i don't know it was a pumpkin it didn't look like it needed to be neat so yeah, you don't have to do this, but it was super fun. I mean, you could at least invite people over um, to hang out with you and paint pumpkins. It wouldn't necessarily have to be your Thanksgiving decor, but it could be. All right, on to the next thing. Okay, so we're back outside and I have this piece of cardboard, I guess, thin cardboard, and I saved it because I didn't know what I was gonna exactly use it for, but I think this would be perfect. If you want to cut a whole bunch of these kind of like shaped cardboard things up and then paint them and give them out as Thanksgiving party things or whatever, I think that's actually such a good idea. So I'm gonna give you a quick example of what I might would do for a bookmark gift thingy. So yeah. Let's get started on this. I'm gonna go with a more put together look for this one just to contrast each other, the pumpkin and this one. So for this one, I'm gonna take a swoosh of my white, the slightest bit of black and mix it in. I'm gonna make a gray. Alrighty, and then going in with this Hold on the tripods. I'm trying to give you guys a good angle where you can see it, but at the same time, I need to be able to paint it, so. Oh, well that's really interesting. Hmm, I kinda like it though. Okay. I am going to do a double-sided bookmark. Now we're going to just let this dry. And while that dries, I'm going to try not to put it on the table. For this side, I'm going to do what I was originally going to do. I wasn't planning on doing that, but that looked cool. So let's do what I was originally going to do. Alright, not going to lie to you, these are horrible brushes. They do not paint with good drinks. But they're all I have out here, so I guess we're going to go with it. Alright, so my battery is pretty low, so I'm going to go ahead and let my phone charge upstairs, and then I'm going to finish the painting process upstairs as well. Okay, here's what it looks like right now. So I finished it up and let it dry for a couple days and here is what it's looking like. And punch a hole in it, right in the corner, voila. And then I have these old ponytails, this little ponytail thingy through it, through the hole. And then I'm gonna do one of these majiggers and then pull it through. And just like that, you could leave it like this, but I'm gonna add an extra layer by doing the exact same thing I did in the bookmark to the ponytail, like that. Remember that? We're gonna be making some baskets. And to go in the basket, we're going to make pumpkins. Alrighty. So for my pumpkins, I'm thinking I'm going to want to try and get like, I'm trying to decide how big I want the pumpkins. 
I think I'm going to try and get two pumpkins out of each washcloth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in half so that I can pin it. Okay, so it's a bit of more of like a oval than a circle, but that's okay. It's not really going to matter too much, so on to the next one. And another one is done. I'm gonna go ahead and pin the other ones off camera and then I'll see you guys when it's time to sew. Let's stick it on there on a corner just to be sure I get the right curve. Let's go ahead and get started. to go ahead and leave that part open and now it's a little opening and I don't know if I left it big enough but we'll see I'm gonna go ahead and try and thread oh my gosh I did not leave that very big and just try and tear the fabric well this is fun hmm um give me a minute okay I went ahead and turned it right side um out or whatever off camera because <laughs> that was difficult but I got it I did not leave a big enough opening, which is a good thing to know. With most fabrics, they're stretchier, so you could leave a bigger opening, but I didn't for this one, and my bad. So I'm going to put this aside, and we're going to continue sewing, and then, yeah, you'll see. Alrighty, take two. <laughs> Much, much better so as you can see I left a hole in there and it's still gonna be a tight fit but you basically just turn it right side out stuff it in if you need you can stick your finger through or you can just pull it like so I'm gonna sew the rest of these up off camera this last one's gonna be really big Already, it's all pinned up, and now let's go sew this massive pillow. Take out that first pin, per usual. It's time to sew up this massive one. cheaper way to get fluff for your pillows um, if you're making pillows at home if you get the fluff from another pillow that you get at the store it's gonna be a lot cheaper than buying fluff that is meant for making pillows I don't know why but it's cheaper so let's go to Dollar General 
Okay, so this is what we're looking for. This is the super value. So this one is going to be $3. So for this much fluff, you can get for $3. Whereas when I looked on Amazon, you could get probably, I think it was half of this for around seven to 14. So this is definitely a cheaper option if you're looking into doing something like pillows and it's already in a case for you. So you just cut the top and start using it. So let's go ahead and make our pumpkins. So we're back and I'm just going to Alrighty, now you just need to cut into that pillow. Alrighty, and then what I like to do before putting fluff and stuff is just, <laughs> sorry, is just um, rip it up like this so that it's extra fluffy and then just start stuffing it into your little pumpkins. I like to just finger by finger it in just works extra well like that. What I'm trying to do is stuff it as full as possible so that it pooches out of the sides and doesn't do a little square because I don't want a little square. Um, I meant to do them more circular, but I just didn't feel like going through all that. So, alrighty. I think that's going to do us right there. I have plans for this. Don't worry, it won't look this square forever. See the vision. So, let's go ahead and do the rest. Now, on to the big guy. Gotta get a lot of fluff. I'm just like punching it in there. There we go. Let's move on to the next step. Next, I'm gonna need some rubber bands. And for these, I'm just using the rubber bands that came from, came on like my broccoli and stuff. Um, I saved those and then I'm just cutting this one in half because it's too thick. And I did that with the rest of them as well. So now I have five rubber bands. I'm going to go ahead and pull in the sides really good. Push down the stuffing. Pull in the sides really good. Make sure you have those iconic pumpkin folds in there. That's what we're looking for. And try and make sure you get that on both sides. It might be difficult, but eventually you'll get it right. And then take your rubber band and tie it really tight really tight now let me just do that for the rest of these and lastly to the big guy now i'm gonna have to mash this really far down the reason why i filled this one so much was also because i didn't want it to compact too much because after use because as you know pillows compact after use and i wanted to feel free to be able to lay on this one if i wanted to because it is so big and i didn't want it to compact a whole bunch so i put a whole lot of filling in there and compact it as much as I could already. That way it keeps its pumpkin-y look. Now I have this twine that I'm going to use to make them look like pumpkins. So I'm thinking I'm going to start by putting hot gluing this to this part of the pumpkin just to ensure that it stays. Let me let that dry. Now I'm just in case it's not fully dry I'm going to hold it here with my thumb then pull it really tight so it makes those creases and pull it to the top here and then I'm going to take some more hot glue and secure it into place. I'm going to put it right under. I don't want it really to hit the rubber band so much because I'm concerned it will melt it and snap it. And then I'm going to hold it with my finger. It's singeing me, but I want to make sure it stays in this place. It's really hot. But I do want this to turn out really good. So now I'm just going to um, come back whenever it's dry. Now I'm going to wrap it around once the stem, or it will be the stem, and then continue on by going over here next. I think that seems like a new, another good division. I'm trying to figure out how to do this best. I think that's probably the best way to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it really tight on this side then secure at the bottom here with some hot glue because I don't, I'm concerned it's gonna slip off the edge otherwise. And then secure it. And then once that dried for just a little bit, I'm bringing it back up here and securing it up here as well. Once again, wrapping it around the stem one more time. And then starting on our new design, which is going to be right down here again. And we're going to secure the bottom once again. Pull really tight and bring it up. 
and secure at the top again. So you could leave it like this if you wanted to, but I want to do these sides down a line again. So I'm going to go ahead and continue the same pattern I've been showing you to do, and then I'll be back. Also on this, when I'm going across this last one, I am securing it at each of these little combinations here. And then moving on to the next one up here, just to let you know. And once you've got it the way you like it, you can just go ahead and keep wrapping this around the top. To get to the top here, as you can see what I've done is I've just put in some hot glue. And then just keep on spiraling it like that into that little hole. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut this. And then add a small, tiny doll if you don't want to show up. Oh, right there. I know y'all got to <laughs> secure that. And then you're done with it, and it's looking right. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other ones, and then the big one. All right, it's the next day, and it's time to work on this big one. I've already finished, as you can see, all these tiny ones here. So I'm going to do this just like I did the tiny ones, only I figured you'd enjoy watching me do this because it's huge, and why not? So I will probably speed most of this up. Also, just so you know, I let this cool for just a second, and then I stick my thumb on it because that makes it go all matte. So when you take your thumb off, it's dry, and it's also matte and not shiny, so it matches better with the texture of unshiny fabric. And because this one I'm probably going to lay on, I am going to secure the first wrap around the bottom as well. On the other ones, I didn't secure the first wrap, but only the rest of them. But for this one, I am going to secure the first wrap. So we're going to give it a little hot glue right there. You gotta work kind of fast so that it doesn't all harden. And voila, they're done. Anybody wanna go to the pumpkin patch with me? So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Stay tuned for part two. will be coming out sometime within this week. I'm really excited for it. I had so many crafts, so I decided to split up into two different videos. So I've got another video coming out really soon. Stay tuned for that. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week in another video. Remember, God made you to be who you are, so be you, be different, and out.